My name is Bokang Kuto. I grew up in Limpopo, but I spent most of my childhood in Johannesburg. I did sciences for a year before I can find my passion in journalism. Now that I'm doing journalism and media studies, um, my passion for science hasn't died, it lives long. I'm using journalism and media studies to tell stories about young scientists who are taking a step towards solving the problems in Africa and worldwide. Even though I'm no longer doing the sciences, I still have friends in the science department. One of those friends, my young scientist, Prey Stembo, he's busy with a big project in biotechnology. You should meet him. I think you'll like him. Um, so growing up, I could say like, um, I didn't have it even until later on. So my best friends were pretty much books. And um, I had a set of encyclopedias and all that that were science oriented. So that was pretty much my first exposure to science. I remember looking and going through one of the encyclopedias and they're describing how electricity is made and how it gets to our houses and all that. And I'm like, wait, I can make something that, that's like that. So um, I you know, try to get a kettle together and like a magnet and all these wires, trying to make my own generator type of uh, a thing. And that was pretty much one of my first experiments, which I can um, remember. Um, when I came, to, when I started my BSc, it was always just I'm going to be a doctor. I was I was set on it. Um, but you know, doing subjects, the approach which Rhodes University took in terms of, I'll say, for example, physics, they would give us hands-on life problems where the answers aren't given to you. So that approach in terms of teaching um, and then applying what we're learning really got me engaged and you know peaked it, it it tapped into those centers of my brain I, I was always that type of you know a, t a person in terms of the way i think i like problems whereby the solution isn't given and we're all working together on on such challenges and things like that so being exposed to that made me you know think twice about medicine say hey you know what i think i want to be on this field whereby and discover new things, things in, in tap into areas which have never been tapped into before. Praise is known by most people in science faculty and roads in general. He's an inspiration to myself and others. In fact, I'm not the only one who has something to say about Praise. Praise is a very uh, special student without a doubt. He's one of the um, best honest students I think I have ever had. He's a very talented researcher and I think Praise is certainly going to go places. Um, I'm Tutsi, I'm Praise's girlfriend, and what drew me to Praise um, was his passion for science and his intelligence. Praise and I normally work together in the lab, so uh, we bounce off ideas and we just help each other. If he has a problem with his experiments, I pitch in and help him out. If I have a problem with my experiments, he pitches in and gives me ideas, and that's basically how we've been doing um, this degree together. Now we know how great Praise is, but what is so groundbreaking about his research? This is the fun part. Well, I think maybe with the African sleeping sickness that we are studying, he is looking at proteins that perhaps no other group in the world is looking at at the moment, and he made some very interesting breakthroughs that we were, are hoping to pursue further. Um, so he's working on a, a protein, a novel protein, very little in the world has been done on this particular protein. I think that's probably, it's a novel protein, um, but we've got a lot more to explore. He's he made some very novel findings in his honours project, but we now need to go further on and uh, try and figure out what these proteins are doing in the cell. And if we manage to knock them out, are we able to kill the parasite? That's the big question. With him doing this research, I feel like it's very important because this could lead to a potential drug and could basically benefit um, a whole lot of people in the future. Um, okay, so African, human African trypanosomiasis as it's known, or simply sleeping sickness, um, is a disease that affects um, 36 countries in sub-Saharan Africa. Wait, 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 wait. Praise likes using his big words. Let me clarify this for you. Human African trypanosomiasis, referred to as sleeping sicknesses, has been an epidemic in sub-Saharan African countries for centuries. This sickness is transmitted through the flies carrying the lethal parasite. Let's learn more about the transmission process.
It sets a fly in just trypanosoma parasites when it bites an already sick human. These parasites then accumulate in the fly's gut, and after 20 days, the fly is capable of passing on the parasite to another human with a bite. The trypanosomes then enter the human's bloodstream and slowly feed on the cells, making the person sick. Thousands of people get infected with the sickness every year. This sickness has been an epidemic in sub-Saharan African countries since the 1900s. When infected, this disease can be deadly. We'll get to know why in a bit. And also... It's one of the neglected tropical diseases. And the reason why it's described as a neglected tropical disease is because it's one that affects mostly developing countries and doesn't you know, attract that much attention um, compared to other diseases like HIV, AIDS or um, malaria. Why is the disease so deadly? We know that sleeping sickness is caused by a parasite, and a parasite can only survive in a living organism. With Trypanosoma parasite, it survives in a human bloodstream, and it eats away cells. As it eats away the cells, it makes the host sick in two stages. So sleeping sickness um, occurs in two stages. In the first stage, the symptoms which you often um, notice are things like fever, itching, um, aches, um, and things along that line. And then when it progresses into stage two, it becomes something that is, affects your nervous, central nervous system. And then you begin to experience symptoms such as um, sleeping disorders, um, psychosis, confusion, and things along that, um, those lines. What PRAISE aims to discover is a substance that can counteract the trypanosoma parasite a substance that the parasite can attach to instead of attaching to the host cells. The substance will eventually kill the parasite. In this case, I'm working with something that is um, your fundamental at nature. So DNA that codes everything that makes you, um, from the way you look and things like that. And I'm doing this simple experiment and purifying DNA. Essentially what I need to do is um, I've grown these cells overnight. Um, this app has a batch of bacteria cells and the idea is that I want to take out um, the DNA from these cells that codes for my spe uh, specific protein which I want to test. Um, so this, these instructions come with um, the kit, right? So every kit, the word kit itself, it's just the fact that the reagents, everything that's included in the kit um, is specifically for that process. So the instructions come with the kit and they guide you in terms of how to use the reagents, which reagent to use first and just um, the different timings which you have to incorporate when actually doing the um, experiment. So I'm adding neutralization buffer. Um, it's part of the reagents which you need in order to um, rupture the cells. So it's first it's the cell lysis buffer and then it's followed by this neutralization reagent. So next would be just to mix everything up, all right. Um, and as you can observe, if you look at what's going on inside here, um, it's more, I can say, m cloudy and also just kind of forming clumps, right? And then that's just the thing, reagents and the cells reacting together and um, the cells rupturing and breaking apart. So next thing would be to sort of get the cells to form um, a clump at the bottom so that we can remove the, reag the, the reagents which we just added and clean up everything since our cells have been ruptured open. Okay. 
So um, again, ideally what my centrifuge does is that it spins uh, these tubes at a high velocity, high speed. And so if you look here, you see this goes around, spinning everything at high velocity. And with the force of that spin, it causes things to be pushed to the bottom of the tube. So whatever's inside will be basically um, separated by that force. I'm going to spin this down there for 15 seconds actually. So next up, what we have here is now called the flow through. Um, I'm going to discard that. So this is my last um, wash, um, centrifuging, which I'm going to do. But before that, I'm just going to let this rest for one minute. Um, here I have time in this lab. Um, OK, so I'm just going to set this to one minute. And then leave my time to go one minute. So my time's up. So now after that final spin, whatever was inside the column has now been washed out and is now inside my um, tube. And essentially, basically what's left over is my um, purified DNA, which I was trying to collect. So now this DNA, I'm going to use it in, another f in other future experiments. And I'm going to um, basically use it to express, um, I should rather say produce, the respective protein which I want to study in bacteria. Um, so from what I created, so it's a whole process. And in the drug discovery process, um, there are different approaches which you can take. And in the approach which we take here is we want to study um, those drug targets, those proteins, essentially, which would then lead to um, defects inside the parasite. And those defects would what will are, are, are what you want in a drug, something that would cause the parasite not to grow pa properly or to basically um, kill it. So by killing the parasite, that's how you basically come up with the treatment. You know, um, being in a developing country, you know, when it comes to doing research like this, you find out that simple processes, um, which at this stage are actually automated in um, more developed countries, we have to go through the process step by step. So you find out that they've moved on to more advanced systems of doing simple things. It's not easy being a scientist in Africa despite the lack of resources. But praise proves that there's no lack of passion in Africa's aspiring scientists, and he's not alone. So I believe that science and students on Rhodes University can definitely change the world. Um, science not only in the pharmacy faculty, but also in the chemistry faculty, in physics, all types of things, because science can lead to new discoveries, new developments, um, which can definitely help the betterment of people in every form, be it psychology or medicine. I actually do believe that African scientists and science in general has the potential to change the world and make it a better place for everyone. Like if you do your research, you actually find that some of the African scientists have been doing some amazing things. And though we don't know yet whether praise research will change the lives of thousands, what we do know is that praise is not an outliner. Africa is a home to young, passionate and talented scientists who, given the chance, can one day make a positive change to Africa and the world.